This is the World on Water, December 21, 18. This is what happened last week around the world in sailing. You're watching a very quiet village dock as they get ready for the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Sail GP gets ready for their racing, which starts in February in Sydney. The kites are flying at the Asia Pacific Hydrofoil Series. Reality TV meets the Superfoilers. Sail Melbourne action is over. The TP52 division in the Rolex Sydney Hobart has a Hungarian team. And Dennis Connor talks about the American challenges for the America's Cup. So have a happy Christmas and we'll see you next week from the Rolex Sydney Hobart. They're just another level, these boats. There's never been anything like this. It's going to be all on. It's going to be incredibly intense. The dangers are real. The speeds are starting to push the limit, I think. You always need to be prepared, and that's why the safety is so crucial. We spend two days with Julian and his team. We see the value in it and know that, hey, worst case scenario, we could be there. So we've got to be prepared and ready. The progression of the course is for them to be able to master every part of a capsize situation. So we're teaching them how to breathe into a scuba tank, getting out of a broken net. Then after for the final test, we kind of combine everything together focus to lessen what they're teaching because uh, I know it will be very important not only safe for your life maybe for your your friend your crew these guys are teaching us how to how to relax when you're out of breath and you're under pressure your breathing will be very very quick if you that moment just one second you throw in the water will be very dangerous <laughs> That's difficult getting your breath back. It's pretty scary. Yeah. Your natural reaction is you haven't got enough air to panic pretty quick. I was put completely out of my comfort zone. I would not be comfortable having not done it and going on such a fast boat. You gotta definitely remind yourself of that once your heart rate's up. Whew. And hopefully all the skills we learn here, it will all be second nature. We know exactly where our spare air is, we know where everything is. We'll relax, know what to do and hopefully get ourselves out of the situation as quickly as possible. This is the third and final day of the KTA Asia Pacific Hydrofoil Series at Desiru Coast. Now, for the past two days of competition, we've seen a lot of people really struggle to make it past the heavy shore break with their foil boards. But this morning, a few of the riders have decided to actually get out there and make the most of these waves with a nice morning surf session. At the spot that we can do in this saru, it's, it's a lot of things actually, like, as long as you, it's a sea spot, you actually you can do, but it depends on the weather too and water condition. Because we have the monsoon season, so it's have a period, so after, when it's uh, off season, you can do another spot like SUP and other things like kayaking, even you can go fishing. And during the monsoon, yeah, we got wave and we got wind, so whatever spot that you can, yeah, it's good. First place feels like, I don't know, it feels nice, I like it. To win for today, uh, I feel really good. This is my second time to be in a world competition and this is first time, first time for me to be in a first place, so I feel really good.
Uh, we're just in the little battle out to the boat ramp off the Astro Turf, but um, we've been waiting for the breeze for a little bit, so I think we might end up with a little bit of a northerly or a westerly, maybe an easterly. Uh, who knows what's going to happen, but uh, we'll just go out and see what we get. We just came off the water because there was no wind and we're now getting blasted by about 40 knots. <laughs> Good old Melbourne. We, we stayed out super late, I don't know what time it is now, but it's late into the evening. Um, but we got two races in, which is good, considering we've only, uh, we'd only done three before that. I've been trying to keep my hand in over the last year and a half, selecting a few events here and there, but um, with the games really only just around the corner, it's, I suppose it's, it's time to really up it and, and, and put the time in, and that's why we decided to come down here to, to Australia for some good racing and good training, hopefully. Today was, you know, what can you say about Melbourne? It was uh, pretty classic and we had not a lot of wind and then a huge squall and then not much wind again. And eventually we got racing uh, pretty late. It's about eight o'clock in the evening and just got in. So we got two races in, two quickies, and I uh, had a good day. So really happy to come away with a one-two in this fleet and, and um, take it to the big dogs. So um, all to play for tomorrow. Long day, it's time for dinner. This report is brought to you by Pantania's Sale and Power Insurance. Yeah, no matter what sort of boat you have, whether it's a large power boat, a small yacht, uh, a regular production vessel, give us a call at Pantania's and uh, we'll do our best to satisfy your needs. We're in the media centre of the CYC, ready for the Hobart race in a couple of days' time, and we're with uh, Brett Perry, who's the farm man in Australia, who's sailing with uh, a group of internationals. So, Brett, tell us what's happening. Yeah, so I uh, got a phone call a few weeks ago uh, to come up and um, uh, with some boys from Hungary. I've had a little bit to do with them overseas while I was over there and uh, met up with Ronnie, the skipper, and, uh, and Kello, the tactician here. So, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. It's good to put a team in, international team into this race. So tell us about the boat. What's happened? Well, it's a uh, TP52 Far Design um, from the uh, from 2006, and uh, so it's been around in Australia for a while. But it, uh, it, it's it's in good condition. We've uh, completely, basically re, uh, redone everything, and Ronnie and his team have uh, done a wonderful job getting it to where it's at now. So we're now just doing little things to to make it happen. So it's the West Australian Boat M3, is Correct, it? Correct, yes. Okay, now, when was the bike? 2004? I think it was from 2006, wasn't it? Six, yeah, six, yeah, 2006, yeah. so. Okay, right. Yeah. What have you done so far? I've got to change all of the uh, running rigging and uh, uh, serviced all the winches, all the engines, all the electronics, so 
So our boat is, boat is really good condition inside out, every system works. Uh, uh, service, service the mast parts, locks. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> you can't, you can't even put together. Put together. <laughs> That's all right. All right. So what, what's your background? What, what your sailing is where you're in Hungary? Where you well, Hungary, we we usually sailing on, sailing on the lake, but uh, I've not done a lot of sailing in Croatia mm -hmm. and uh, and Italy. So and I'm here, and I'm here six years ago. So uh, I did two Hobart before, but well, this is my first one as a, as a skipper. That's good. Well, uh, the weather forecast, although it's not set, of course, it uh, looks like it's going to be a running race, big oh. nor'easter. You, you never know until the last last day, and I'm not even not even bothered to looking looking it because it's all all just changing, and I don't want to stress about it. We're going anyway, so it doesn't matter where, it, where which which kind of wind is blowing, we are going. <laughs> We're heading south. Yeah. <laughs> so talking about the navigator, the, what's happening with the what's the, the plan? Uh, I'm not a navigator. I'm a tactician. Tactician, <laughs> so I think. So Cameron McKenzie. Are, our navigator and uh, he gave me the information. Uh, so at this moment, uh, I have to say the same that uh, Ronnie. So <laughs> it's not uh, exactly here with condition because the system is moving. So we're waiting for uh, uh, which position we get uh, on the start line of this. So as uh, uh, I have to follow my skipper's decision. So we can go in anyway. And I hope it will be a tactical race because uh, uh, I, I believe we, we can create a, a, a good way to, to Robert. So I, I, I hope in, in, on the start line we will, uh, we will, down, we will uh, good uh, uh, selling. And uh, after of the offshore I have to, I have to believe on uh, my Aussie friends because they are the expert on the offshore sailing and I have to trust my navigator, my skipper and my crew boss, sailing master, BP. But you've, uh, you've been doing some coaching, haven't you, just recently? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm uh, the tactician of uh, XY.9 in Europe. Uh, what it's called now is Y Joe. So I, uh, I have some experience. And yes, I'm the proud coach of uh, Jean Borberet, who is the uh, world champion in fin class. In the fin class, yes. Yeah. Well, he did make so many well recently, didn't he? Yeah, he is the world champion in yeah. he, he, he was the first. Yeah, yeah. Oh. In, in amazing, after amazing uh, medal race, yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. In the name of Jumbo, thank you. Yeah, well and truly. Now, Brett, what's been happening as far as uh, your operation is concerned here in Australia with fire? Are they. Um, Oh look, we're uh, you know always pushing. Um, it's a very hard time at the moment for new but new builds. Um, so uh, we're just working on new designs and uh, working very closely with Britain Ward over there. And um, hopefully we'll start seeing some some action soon. Um, so you know it's a process. Uh, you just got to go through it and just keep pushing. So it's a, it's 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 a slow process, but it's getting there. Don't you have a, a situation at the moment whereby you're looking at boats and optimising them? Yep, um, basically the plan is that uh, FAR providing a service for, uh, for, for, for owners to come to them and, uh, and ask for optimisation for their uh, certificates. So ultimately for them it's about uh, you know, making sure that owners are sailing uh, with the handicap, otherwise it uh, defeats the purpose of actually going sailing. So um, a lot of people don't realise the numbers, where the numbers come from and, and what they mean. They just get a number at the end of the day. But uh, if you look at it really closely, you can actually make some good, good inroads into optimisation with, uh, you know, various things of weight and sail area and all that stuff. So we do supply that service for, for owners, um, and that's that's a, that's a slowly gaining pace for sure. So the uh, getting back to the race, the TP <coughs> division is going to be very uh, very hot. Yeah, well, 11 boats. Um, I mean, you just can't go past, obviously, the Itchy Barn uh, program. You, we all know that background. Uh, they're, they're, they're the ultimate, you know, consummate professionals. Um, we have Zen as well that's come over. Um, some really good top-notch top -notch guys on that boat. Um, you know, we've got Jonathan Swain and uh, Frank O'Leary coming. There's a few others that I you know, can't call or mention, mention at this stage. But, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're hot boats. They're hot sailors. Um, so with 11 TPs on the start line, it's going to be a nice little uh, mini race inside the race. And I think uh, it'll be a well worth covering for sure. Well, if you get a big steaming nor'easter, mate, it's going to be uh, a good sleigh ride. 
Yeah, um, you know, we've uh, obviously put, just put this crew together um, in the last, sort of, I guess, say, couple of weeks. Uh, the Hungarian side of the team arrived at the start of this week. So uh, we're pushing very hard to just get to the point where we're confident with each other. I mean, the big part of this process is building the team um, and making sure that everyone on board is aware or understands the, 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 this race. I mean, this race, is, as we all know, is not a, it's not just a uh, cruise in the tropics. So uh, we're making sure that they are aware of that, and um, I think that's working out well. I mean, um, Ronnie and uh, Kello and Aaron, the bowman, um, you know, they're all experienced sailors. Uh, the other guys are... Are, uh, are gaining experience by the day, so you know we've got a good uh, bunch of Australians on the boat as well. So um, you know they're all uh, they're all starting to gel. So Ronnie, how many Hungarians uh, in your crew? How many have you brought in? We have nine nine Hungarians, without including me. Oh, good. And you're eight eight uh, coming from Hungary, for And but how many in the in the crew? All up. Fifteen. 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 That's good. That's a good uh, good number. Oh, well, that's great. But look, uh, congratulations in, the, in getting to the, the starting line or lining up for the race. Wish you all the best and uh, we'll see you in Hobart. Thank you very much. All the best. Hi, folks. This is your friend Dennis Connor coming to you courtesy of the Harrington Brothers the Specialty Produce Network. I know you just uh, listened to me a, few, a week or so ago when I was on the way to the Star Sailors League in Nassau. But while I was down there, I, there were three uh, big announcements, and uh, it was a wonderful event uh, there in Nassau. So I wanted to tell you a little bit uh, about these events. But before we get into that, I want to introduce a special guest that I feel very privileged to have here. That's Greg Stewart. He uh, went to school in uh, Michigan, at the premier naval architecture school in the in the world now, and graduate there and moved to San Diego and of course, uh, those of you that live here know he's the guiding force and the commodore of the of the Ancient Mariner Sailing Association and runs that. Keeps, he's the glue that keeps it together, runs the meetings, gets the dues, starts the races. He's basically, all he doesn't look like it, he's an Ancient Mariner. He is the Ancient Mariner. So, Greg, uh, welcome to the podcast. And I uh, know that uh, Roger is looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Well, thank you very much, Dennis, for inviting me to come. This is quite an impressive uh, arrangement you have here. So, um, Greg, uh, it's nice to have you here because especially interesting, I think, because one of the three big announcements we heard at the uh, Star Sailors League was that there were eight uh, potential challengers, uh, new challengers that uh, met the deadline of the 1st of December, and that uh, two of them have been certified by Grant Dalton and the America's Cup uh, event authority, uh, one from uh, uh, Malta, with Ian Percy uh, heading that up. As most of you uh, might remember, Ian was involved with Paul Caird and the Artemis campaign in San Francisco, and then he ran the Artemis campaign in, uh, in the uh, last America's Cup in Bermuda. Very experienced uh, uh, guy in all facets of the sport. Uh, wonderful, wonderful sailor. Uh, world champion in fins and stars and he'll uh, he'll be a factor in the final uh, round of the uh, challengers uh, selection series in Auckland but along with that there was an announcement that the uh, uh, group headed up by uh, Mike Buckley and T Taylor Canfield and uh, T Todd Reynolds announced that their their challenge has been accepted by New Zealand as well and uh, they're going to represent the Long Beach Yacht Club, which I'm sure that uh, our friends there that really started the Congressional Cup and and uh, were the guiding force of Long Beach Yacht Club becoming a uh, world-class club and world-class event. Uh, and that would have, uh, of course, been Bill, Dele Del uh, Bill DeLezzi and uh, Arch Van Palmer uh, that uh, were the guiding force of the Yacht Club in the beginning. They'd be very pleased to see Long Beach Yacht Club stepping up and uh, taking their, their their place in history as a, a challenging yacht club. And uh, one of the things that I thought must uh, segue into this event is that Greg Stewart, having grown up in Michigan, knows Michigan very well, especially Holland, Michigan, where they're uh, talking about uh, building their uh, America's Cup boat, the, the Stars and Stripes Team uh, USA, 
uh, uh, is talking about building their boat there in Holland, Michigan. And it's ironic that my little boat that I love racing here is a wonderful boat uh, designed by the Nelson Merrick uh, yachting firm where uh, Greg is the uh, key leading naval architect uh, from Michigan. The boat was built there in, in uh, Holland, Michigan, and it was built by a very close friend of Greg's and uh, also sails with Greg in the six meter. And uh, so he knows Holland very well. Greg, can you share any insights uh, where this Team USA America's Cup bo boat might uh, be built? Uh, yes, I can a little bit. I think uh, if all the rumors and stuff are true, it's a boat call, boatyard called Composite Builders. They're a fairly new company set up uh, in Holland, Michigan, where I did grow up. And uh, where Dennis's boat, the BIM, started out as the BIM and was the Menace, was built by John Easley, was the yeah, fellow you were referring to. A great to. sailor and great builder. Uh, Holland, Michigan has a real big heritage in boat building. Some of the famous companies in the Holland area were the Chris Craft Factory, the Slick Craft Factory that became the Tierra, which is still a very big company, uh, Beacon Boat Company, the Jessex Boat Yard right next to the Mackinac Bay Yacht Club. So Western Michigan has a big uh, craftsman and tradesman type uh, work ethic and doesn't surprise me of somebody picking to go back there to build build a boat well that's uh, very insightful greg we understand that the boat has been uh, con uh contracted to build there in michigan and that there are a couple of months into the building uh, again rumor control you can never be believe half of what you hear but we understand that they um, may have been involved in uh, purchasing some of the uh, basics from the team new zealand uh, team that uh, really designed the rules so they may they may have uh, be a late starter, but they, I think they will uh, have a chance to catch up pretty quickly. And uh, they could, they could uh, really be a factor because, of course, we know it's the money. And, uh, of course, if they have the money to uh, start the boat and then the uh, new challengers that we just heard about there um, in, in uh, Star Sailors League, the, the two new challengers, they have to put up a $3 million entry fee for starters, uh, and a million dollar uh, late fee. So they have until the end of December, or the first of the year, under the protocol. So whatever that is, if today's the 14th, they've got uh, 17 days to come up with uh, $4 million in the pockets of the uh, New Zealand Organizing Authority to, to qualify. So we'll know uh, more about the uh, real viability uh, of the Maltese and the uh, Team uh, Stars and Stripes USA efforts if they uh, take the next step and put up the $4 million. So